Hello, and welcome to the first day of the culminating writing task, organizing and writing claims and counterclaims for an analysis essay. We've been reading Reading is Fundamental and completing the cold read task. Throughout this unit, we have built our understanding of how Bradbury uses craft, literary devices, and literary elements to develop the themes in Fahrenheit 451. We have spent time discussing how this we have spent time discussing how and we have used the anchor text theme tracker to record all our thinking. We have also practiced analyzing how an author develops claims, evidence, reasoning, and counterclaims, and we have practiced this in our own writing. Today, we are going to express the understanding we've built across the unit by engaging in the writing process. Today, we will create an outline for the culminating writing task, develop claims evidence, reasoning, and counterclaims for the culminating writing task. You will need the following. Your copy of Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, the culminating writing task handout from the culminating writing task part one, post, the culminating writing task rubric, also from that post, the culminating writing task organizer also from that post, and the anchor text theme tracker, which was posted back on October 6th. Now we're going to read the prompt and the rubric, and we're going to respond to the question, what are the key elements of this essay? Let's look at our prompt first. Culminating writing task directions. How is a theme of Fahrenheit 451 shaped by a literary element or device? To answer this question, we need to determine a theme of Fahrenheit 451. We need to select the literary element, for example, characters, setting, conflicts, etc or device, such as diction, figurative language, symbolism, imagery, etc., that you think most strongly conveys the selected theme. Then you're going to examine how the selected theme is shaped and refined by the element or device you selected. Our product is going to be a literary analysis. You're going to write a literary analysis that supports your claims in answer to the question and demonstrates an understanding of the text. You need to be sure to use proper grammar, conventions, spelling, and great appropriate words and phrases. You're also going to need to cite several pieces of textual evidence to support the analysis, including direct quotations and parenthetical citations. Now let's look at the rubric. And as before, we're going to go over what you do to score a four because we're shooting for four. The student responses demonstrate full comprehension of ideas stated explicitly and infer infer inferentially by providing an accurate analysis. The student response addresses the prompt and provides effective and comprehensive development of the claim or topic that is consistently appropriate to the task purpose and audience. The student response uses clear reasoning supported by relevant fact-based evidence in the development of the claim or topic. The student response is effectively organized with clear and a coherent writing and the student response establishes and maintains an effective style. Now again, the highest that the knowledge of language and conventions goes to is 
three. So let's look what, it, what is required to score a three. The student response demonstrates full command of the conventions of standard English at an appropriate level of complexity. There may be a few minor errors in mechanics, grammar, and usage, but meaning is clear. So now let's go back to the presentation. Looking at both of those documents, the culminating writing task directions and the, the rubric, what are the key elements of this essay? What are you going to be doing? Now let's review the culminating writing task organizer. So your organizer is two slides in a Google slide presentation. You begin with the claim, which is going to show up in the introduction of your paper. Then you have, and your claim should include the theme you choose and the element or device Bradbury uses to develop that theme. Now, because several people have missed days and we didn't quite get a chance to fill in the entire anchor text theme tracker. I also included a completed version of it that you can also use to refer to and write from. Reason one and reason two should explain how Bradbury uses the element or device to develop that theme. So that's gonna cover body paragraphs one and two. Reason three, the counterclaim should acknowledge another element or device that is important, but it should then explain why the device or element you chose is more effective in developing the theme. The best thing to use for planning your essay is the anchor text theme tracker. We've already identified devices and elements, located text evidence, and explained how the devices and elements connect to the themes in this handout. So now let's go back to our other presentation. So now you're going to open the organizer and you're going to complete the claim, reason one and reason two, as well as the evidence and reasoning for reason one and reason two. You're gonna have about 16 minutes to complete this part. And at 16 minutes, we have to move on. So now we're gonna focus in on writing a counterclaim and a rebuttal. 
You include a counterclaim and rebuttal in an argumentative essay in order to recognize an argument your opponent might make and then refute that argument. So for example, you're going to ask yourself a couple of questions. What might someone who disagrees with your claim say? And how would you argue against this person to convince them that you're right? So the counterclaim would be the answer to the question, what might someone who disagrees with your claim say? In terms of this essay, you should think about what another literary element or device that someone could argue more effectively shapes the theme you chose. When you write your rebuttal, you're thinking of the answer to the question, how would you argue against this person? In the example on the slide, I'm writing about the theme that books are an important and controversial part of society. I'm arguing that irony is the element or device that most effectively shapes this theme. I recognize that characterization also develops this theme in the first sentence. This is my counterclaim. Then I explained why, why irony was more effective than characterization in developing this theme in the second sentence. This is my rebuttal. So let's look at the example. One could argue that characterization is most effective in developing this theme because many of the main characters, including Montag, Faber, Granger, and even Beatty, recognize the importance of books to the society. So that's the counterclaim. The rebuttal is what's highlighted in kind of a pinky red color. However, without the element of irony, the reader may not see the contrast that Bradbury uses to emphasize how important and controversial books are. So now it's your turn. You're going to complete the following sections of the organizer. Reason three, which is the counterclaim and the evidence and reasoning for reason three. And you're gonna share your counterclaim and rebuttal with the partner. Now the way partners are going to work, you're going to open a Google doc if I call your name and you're going to share it with the person whose name I tell you to share it with. And then you're both going to be able to edit the document. So instead of sharing it with view only option, make sure you share it so that they can edit it as well. So you'll both type your claim and counter, your, your counterclaim and your rebuttal. And of course, this is the way we're going to do it so that we can be socially distant. You're also going to answer the guiding questions for your partner's counterclaim and give feedback to the partner. And those guiding questions are, what might someone who disagrees with your claim say? How would you argue against this person? I'm going to give you 12 minutes to complete this part. At the end of 12 minutes, we will move on. Now you will complete the conclusion section of the culminating writing task organizer. You're again going to open up that Google Doc where you shared the counterclaim and the rebuttal with your partner. And you're going to discuss your writing task organizer with your partner and share feedback with your partner on their organizer. So to be able to do that, you're going to have to share the organizer itself with your partner. And then you're going to type your information, encouragement, suggestions, 
on the Google Doc. So first share your organizer and then look at the organizer, look at your partner's organizer and make suggestions and feedback on the Google Doc. I'm going to give you about five minutes to do this. And now homework, and homework is especially important today. You need to complete the homework. You can get started if we have, you, you can get started on it as soon as possible, but it needs to be completed by the time you come to class tomorrow. I will be checking. It will be for a grade. Your homework is to complete a draft of the argumentative essay. You will need your copy of Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, so you need to pack that up to take home if you don't have if you haven't done so. You're, you will also need your anchor text theme tracker and your culminating writing task organizer. You're going to open the Google Doc labeled culminating writing task and that is where you're going to write your rough draft. It has to be completed before tomorrow. To be able to participate in class tomorrow, it has to be complete. Congratulations! In this lesson, you expressed your understanding of how Bradbury uses literary elements and literary devices to develop themes in Fahrenheit 451. You also organized your ideas and developed claims, evidence, reasoning, and counterclaims for an analysis essay.